And we are live on Facebook. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Shara Siever, your host uh, for Bridging the Human Divide. Uh, this is our eighth episode, and uh, I'll be speaking today with Anna, Anna Halab. Um, I'm a leadership consultant, a change maker and business coach, and founder of Igniting the Spark and the Community Resiliency Project. And uh, I, my purpose is to help leaders and organizations and company use the qualities of empathy and transparency and other communication models to create thriving, connected, uh, cultures within their organizations. I am so delighted today to welcome my guest, Anna Halab, who I've known for, for quite a while for all the work that she has done in multiple communities um, as a peace educator, as a certified radical forgiveness coach, and as an expert in the field of forgiveness in reconciliation. Uh, Anna is a frequent speaker and teacher on the role of forgiveness in restorative justice and therapeutic settings. And she weaves in expanding practices for trauma and ancestral healing, collective wellness and spiritual liberation in her work. Uh, she's the author of both uh, Forgive and Be Free and The Edges Are Friendly. And that, that book, Forgive and Be Free, was actually a game changer for me. Uh, when I first uh, read it a few years ago. And you can find out more about Anna at her website, AnnaHoleb, H-O-L-E-B, dot com. Uh, so today, our conversation will explore uh, the root of divisiveness, uh, kindness and radical for forgiveness as pathways to peace and wholeness with ourselves and with each other. So welcome, 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 Anna. I am so, so happy and honored that you're joining me today. And wh where are you located? Hi, Shara. Thanks for having me. I am in Ashland, Oregon right now. What a wonderful place to be. Yeah. Um, I just came from Mount Shasta not just, just a week or so ago. So it's just down, just down the road from you. Yeah. So I was really, really excited when you said, yes, I'd love to be part of the conversation. So I, I would just like to jump right in, Anna, and just share with us and with me just what inspired you to be part of this bridging the human divide conversation well first of all i want to thank you for having the conversation it's something that we really really need to have and i've been thinking about this for a while and i i know a lot of us have you know, what do we do this is a very transformational and difficult time and it just seems to be getting crazier and crazier so um, since I have years and years of background in peace education and peace activism, I really welcome times and conversations where I can combine the inner peace modalities like forgiveness, which is the deepest, best one I know. That's why I'm so passionate about it. But also the um, social connections and conversation that we have with each other because that's where we get to use the tools um, not only in our personal lives going this way you know uh, connecting with our spirit and being connected to the earth and our personal lives but also with each other and with the world um, and that's really what's at stake right now so I want to be part of this conversation and I care deeply about it Yes, I, I, I know you do. I've been following you for such a long time. You know, you mentioned um, social connection. I, I've, I've, I've tagged this whole arena of using, um, you know, the inner peace modalities, as you mentioned, and other communication models. I mean, it really is all about um, social wellness because we, we are um, a social species and we are interconnected. So that's, that's been my passion, is how can we continue or contribute to a social wellness in, in the midst of, um, you know, a polarization like I've never seen. So um, you had mentioned a little bit in an, a previous conversation we had about history 
And I'm wondering if you could share a bit about what you see as some of the root causes of the divide and the polarization that we are experiencing so much in, in our communities, in our countries, and, and globally. Right, and this is such a big question. And of course, this is my, my personal take on it, but I will share it since you asked. And that is that um, as far as history goes, I feel like there are people who don't realize that the manipulation that we are experiencing now in our country has been used over and over and over throughout thousands of years. So we can, even in the more recent history, look to Stalin, look to Hitler, look to Pol Pot um, in Cambodia. Um, there are many, Robert Mugabe, there are many, many autocratic, dictatorial leaders who have used fear to control the population. So the more fear there is, the, the easier it is for people to become very, very concerned with their own personal survival and only the survival of their family or the people who look like or feel like them only. And we lose, and I think this is what's happening, not that we've lost it, but a certain segment possibly of our population has lost a concern for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like the social fabric and the fabric of the earth herself. We don't really have time on an environmental level to get bogged down in the way that we're bogged down right now. We have to come out of it. And there are many young people who are leading the way in reminding us about this. Um, and yet, if we don't know history, or we have forgotten history, or we have not been part of perhaps the marginalized peoples who have suffered, mm -hmm. then it won't be foremost in our minds. Um, you know, and so the people now that are in the streets killing each other, not the ones peacefully protesting, but the ones that are out there um, creating violence, they may not know that this has happened over and over and over throughout history and that we don't have to buy into it again. Mm -hmm. Th these are excellent, excellent points. And I wanna thank you, first of all, for your courage in sharing uh, your perspective and, and reminding us that, um, how important it is to be aware of history and you know, to continue to be our own investigative reporters and journalists and you know that gets into a, another conversation but just how important it is um uh to to be sure that you know enough education is out there so that we can recognize uh these patterns uh but the point you brought up about fear it's this is not a new strategy it's been used um you know since there's been any kind of governance really in the history of, of um, our species of humanity. And so what I'm understanding is that your work addresses this fear on multiple levels and through different paths. So your peace work, your radical forgiveness work. And I just would like to hear a little bit more about your work and how you are approaching the, the core cause, which many people are agree upon, but how you are unraveling the fear so that we can depolarize. Thank you, yes. So this is a individual, <clears throat> myself and my life and my creator, um, that's where I need to go, just like you need to go to yours and each person then we have responsibility for how we show up in the world. And it doesn't mean that we're responsible for um, the, we're not personally responsible for the global things that we have no control over, but we do have control over how we show up every day, how we take every single breath. And so without inner healing, without really grappling in an honest way with, okay, so what is it inside of us where we are not at peace? 
those are the places that have not yet been forgiven. And in, when I say forgiveness, I'm using it as a, a much more expanded term than the traditional model. So what I mean is those places have not been unwound. They have not been offered up. They have not been released. And so my work is about helping people learn how to do this. I don't do a reading. I help people to learn this skill so they have it for the rest of their lives. And it's an empowerment and it's also necessary for any kind of spiritual path, no matter what it is that you love, this component is gonna be part of it. And it's also a big part of our social interaction because wherever we're not at peace inside, we will project outside to our world. Mm -hmm. And you can really see that happening right now in our country, especially, and around the world too. Right. Yeah, that's, those are, <coughs> excuse me, those are excellent points. And, you know, it's come up in, in many conversations that it, we seem to be going back to, um, we, at, we as individuals, first of all, to, to unravel the confusion, the chaos, or um, the fear, whatever emotion it is that's keeping us from being at inner peace, before we can possibly address it collectively. And it just seems like such an enormous task of how do we, how do we approach this? And how do we even, how do we educate uh, the collective on the importance of starting uh, with that, inner self forgiveness or radical forgiveness i mean how how do we even get that uh that meme out as as a, as a solution well that's <laughs> been the question of the last 20 years for my life <laughs> exactly <laughs> that um and i do notice that more and more people are um able to hear me when i first started um People were going, like, what do you do, huh? And then they would just sort of click off, and it was hard to even mm -hmm. have this conversation. But now I notice that there are more and more people saying, oh, yeah, that's important. Oh, yeah, tell me more. Or, oh, yeah, I already realized that. And I'm on the path, and I'm, I'm, I'm with you as a team, which is really my vision, is that we heal together. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether there's, well, you got to do this part first and then you do this part second. I don't, I feel like we just need to do it all and yet not right. get overwhelmed, you know, right. by, I mean, that was one of my things is like, how am I going to fix the entire planet? Oh no, I'm not. I'm just, not. Not. you right. know, right. I need to do what's mine to do. And if everybody does what's theirs to do, coming from kindness Mm. then we will have a completely different world. Mm -hmm. You're mentioning about we need to educate ourselves. And I just want to say something about that. Please. Yeah. Uh, because now that we have the internet, we can educate ourselves about whatever, and we can decide, oh, I'm right. Uh, and there's just such a potpourri of possibilities out there. And so I want to suggest that as we are educating ourselves, we say to ourselves, is, is whatever I'm learning coming from a place where I can make sense of it and have a response that it is coming from love and kindness and compassion? If I learn a bunch of stuff and then my response is hatred and fear and insecurity and depression and anxiety, which is rampant right now, then that's, that's not the deepest education. And right. I suggest that we can go deeper and we can say, all right, yeah, we have to take an honest look at all the horrors and it's hard to do. And I feel like that's part of what we're doing or trying to do. I know I am uh, and have been for yeah. a number of years. Yeah. Thank you I so much. We for yeah, okay. we just can't leave it there. Otherwise, we'll get incredibly depressed and hopeless. So we need help. We need help from this sense of compassion, which comes from a spiritual place. It can be a universal spiritual place. You can put whatever spirituality you understand into that spot. Yes. And I just want to ask people to, to come from that place. Yeah, one of the things I've been doing, um, well, in my work with, with uh, teams and leaders 
is, uh, you know, I've been bringing some of the ancestral leadership practices into, into so-called mainstream, um, you know, sitting in circle, uh, modeling what transparent communication is, uh, setting up a container for vulnerability and for sharing. Um, I haven't gotten really deep into forgiveness practices yet, because sometimes it comes out with some, some kinds of one-to-one uh, -one facilitation that I may be doing between you know, two managers or two leaders. And what I'm finding is also really important right now, Anna, is just in the communities in which we live, uh, to host circles or gatherings or town halls or whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. where this this collective forgiveness or this collective radical self-forgiveness can, can occur and be witnessed simultaneously. And I'm wondering if you've done any work like that. I'm sensing that you have facilitated that, those kinds of processes. I have for years um, done workshops around the world in teaching my version of how it comes through me of this forgiveness process, which comes from a combination of my studies in peace studies academically. I have a master's in dis, uh, dispute resolution. And so there's that, but then there's also radical forgiveness and mentoring with a man named Colin Tipping, who really turned me on to this, uh, this beautiful path. And also my studies of A Course in Miracles. So I have that kind of underpinning for me personally. I don't, I don't proselytize that, but that just right. is my, my story. And so recently in the past few years, I've been offering a once a month inner peace meditation. Uh, we just had one a couple days ago and um, it's a free event. I really wanted to have circles that are free in addition to getting paid for the work that I do, um, I feel like we need to create free places for ourselves to come that are guided so that we can drop into a space of, of inner peace together as best we can and also to offer that. So when we're, when we're in a group situation, it's powerful to, to offer some support for peace on the planet, for uplifting of each other and the earth and her systems and her creatures yeah if that's absolutely. what we're really about we need to commit to it now yeah and i think when we um when we come together again i'm working really focused on on a community level right now but when we come together and just see how similar we are that diffuses the polarization right away when we just start to share from our heart and when we have processes like you just said facilitated, I mean, to me, that is like one of the, the, the solutions that we can do right now. It's like, look, just, you know, just like me, you know, I have, just like you, I have fear. And just like you, I, I have a, a mother who is struggling. Um, and just like you, I have, you know, I have needs for connection and, I have needs to be seen and I have needs to be heard, just like you, when we can see that commonality. Um, I just think the witnessing, when we can create containers for witnessing, that that allows that, that, um, that, that process that you're describing for inner peace and these forgiveness practices to emerge. Um, and we can get away from that, you stay on your side of the street and I stay on my side of the street because we're realizing that, you know, we all, it, we have very, very similar values um, just as human beings. Right, and we have to dig kind of deep sometimes to find those common grounds, but it's very important to do so. And I, I just want to mention that there are some tools that I have found that are really important uh, for bridging the divide. Uh, one of them is, is learning how to take a breath, be still and listen. And to realize that when we listen to someone else, it doesn't mean that we have to agree with them. We can just listen and receive that person as an equal being worthy of our respect, no matter what is going on. So that is not being modeled by our leadership right now. And I'm 
really seeing how important leadership is because of what's going on. So each of us needs to be a leader for peace in the best way that we can. And so listening and learning how to be still, which means probably that you have some sort of meditative practice so that you can be still when you need to be inside of a difficult conversation. And also I wanna mention that um, recently, especially in the last six months or so when the Black Lives Matter um, movement has come to the forefront, I just wanna mention that I've been listening as somebody with white privilege, with somebody who also has a lot of compassion for the history of um, minorities and oppressed peoples, my peoples being one of those, but right now I have not experienced that nearly as much as people of color and indigenous peoples, the native peoples of this land have experienced. So I've just been very sensitive to being more quiet and listening more and really supporting my colleagues who are doing excellent work, who are people of color whose voices need to be heard right now. Absolutely. So that's part of it as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, we think that listening is, is something that we're all able to do. And when we dive deeper and deeper into what listening actually is and what the results can be from true, true presence or active listening, um, you know, that's where I think these qualities of empathy emerge and kindness um, is a base behavior, which I know is uh, a big part of your work as well, Anna. And I just want to wonder if you want to talk a little bit more about kindness and com how do we come from a place of kindness without giving that quality lip service or doing any kind of spiritual bypassing? How do we come from a place of kindness? Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful question. It's one of the main questions of my entire life. I get it. Well, I'll just tell you from this moment, what it feels like to me. Um, you mentioned spiritual bypassing and for people who don't know what that is, it's kind of like a way of saying, of, of kind of putting a, a label on things like, oh, I'm going to be kind, I'm such a kind person. And then not really dealing with all the, the roiling emotion underneath. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna be really, really honest with what's going on and at the same time, not hurt ourselves or anyone else in that exploration with our thought, with our um, actions. So then we have to come to a deep question, which is, am I, are you willing to make this a priority? Mm -hmm. We have to choose that and we have to choose it day in, day out, breath by breath. Am I here for peace and for kindness and for love or am I here for something else? Mm -hmm. And that I can't control anybody except me. Mm -hmm. And so we really are sovereign in that way. We make that choice day in and day out all the right. time. So the more we can be aware of that choice, the better, because then we can say, oh, is what I'm doing kind? And yet we still need to speak up. So that's an art project in itself right there as maybe I'm trying to be as kind as I can, but I have some things I need to honestly say and other people are maybe going to have a huge reaction. So, okay, we just do the best we can. And right. the best we can to not attack each other. Yes. The attack right. comes from our own mind. And okay. from the fear that I think you mentioned earlier, just, um, yeah. so, you know, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about actually mastering being human. I think, and um, you mentioned also the willing, the willingness. Um, not every, you know, it's there's there's no requirement to be willing, but if we want to look at depolarizing and bridging the divide, um, I think you know, willingness is one of the the first steps. Am I willing to be kind? Am I willing to listen? Am I willing to see the commonalities? So this is you know, this has come up a lot on these conversations and. Um, just, is there anything else you want to share that has 
you have used and you have found to be very effective in you know bridging very uh, divergent perspectives um, again bridging the divide uh, healing conflict if you will I, I know you've done you've done some work with uh, ancestral healing as well I don't know if you wanted to talk about that today but this is an opportunity to share more that uh, could benefit our listeners yeah well there's so much you know, know. the ancestral healing piece um, is huge because each of us has not only our personality and our personal experience but we have the family soup that we were born into with all the ingredients and we, when we got here we came from the mystery we dropped down into our family we had to drink the soup there's just no way that's how it's set up we have to drink the soup and the soup has each family you know it's a lot of people and it's a lot of ancestors and what those ancestors have gone through so when we as children are absorbing all of this um, a lot of those flavors are difficult they're bitter and so when we get to be old enough to decide what am I what do I want to keep what are the treasures and what do I want to let go of that's part of making a blessing not only for our lives but for our ancestors and what they went through and for our children and their children so I've noticed that energetically this kind of uh, releasing and and deep offering of our suffering to the one that gives us life however we want to speak about that mm -hmm. it clears the way and it takes some of the burdens off the future generations which we need to do because there's a lot of cleanup to be done here tremendous right yeah. i so love that up on all these levels right right you know i i mean when you're talking and i've had visions of this before because i i do see that uh, a lot of this polarization that we're seeing um I, I think a lot of it is not just this expression of, of conflict within on an individual level, but I'm also seeing, I'm seeing a collective uh, calling for ancestral healing. And I, again, what I would love to see more in our communities, starting in our communities or even just in our families, and it's, it, it's there, but more access to you know, ancestral healing circles and ancestral healing conversations. Um, so this can become part of, uh, you know, mainstream conversations because I, I, I sense that that's a lot of what's going on right now. Yes, and with that, I agree with you. And, and I feel like as one family on the planet, no matter what it looks like, we're one family, we have hurt each other. And we've heard each other through thousands of years of generations. Mm -hmm. And if we want to, and I really want to move into a new cycle where we have the beauty of this earth and we're respectful and giving back to the earth and cleaning her up, which we mm -hmm. need to do, then this um, not only fear, but grief and you know, deep pain Mm -hmm. of our history as a, as a species on the planet. And you can, get, you can get personal, but then you can get bigger and bigger because we live in this fractal, you know, these, these nesting um, experiences of life. So yes, there's the personal, there's me, there's me and my family, there's me and my community, there's me and my nation, there's me and my um, planet, and there's me and my planet within all of the stars. So there are many, many levels, but really this forgiveness work and the self-forgiveness and the forgiveness of, of history itself mm -hmm. is a way of just clearing out, mm -hmm. cleaning out the closet, you know, so that we have a fresh place to be able to work together. Because I used to do a lot of environmental work and I still do some, but what happened was I saw that the teams that I was working in, people were not getting along. And it was stopping the ability of us to actually do what the mission of the piece of the environmental work was. And that's when I switched over and I said, all right, I need to learn about some communication skills. And then that took me even deeper into the forgiveness work. 
yeah, fa fabulous. I think uh, we have that some of Marshall Rosenberg's uh, work in common um, from yes. back in the day. That's one of the things that got me started. Uh, and then I also went into some community mediation. But I want to get back to what you said. Um, I remember doing work with Matthew Fox a number of years ago uh, in Northern California in the Bay Area. And he used to host these, these ceremonies where we got to collectively grieve together. Um, and again, it was so, so powerful to be able to do it um, beyond one-to-one, -to, -one, to just, again, to do it as a collective. And there, you know, there was ancestral healing that was taking place uh, in those experiences as well. So um, I'm, just, I'm just hoping to see more of that work in the, in the future. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your forgiveness work. And I do want to, I just want to do a little plug here. Um, yeah, I also uh, know Colin Tipping's work and was inspired by it. And then when I saw your book come out, Forgive and Be Free, um, this was, as I, I said earlier, um, 2017, this was my bedside book. And I went through all of your steps. Um, and uh, it was it was a very, very, the self-forgiveness process um, that you shared in here was very, very powerful. So just anything else you want to share about forgiveness work or how can we get involved with it in our, even in our, our interpersonal one-to-one -one, uh, relationships, uh, in our families, again, in our communities, because that's where, if, if we're going to heal the divide, we need to start in our own backyards. And so just anything you want to offer about how can people get involved in forgiveness work in wherever they are? Right. Well, there are more and more people like me. I have more and more colleagues around the world who are realizing, okay, forgiveness is an important, essential part of our humanity. So um, I would just welcome you to get it get connected with me through my website, through my work, and also my colleagues who are doing this great work um, to learn about the importance of forgiveness, not only it's in its traditional model, but even expanding it to be bigger than what you learned when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. So people learn about forgiveness usually on the playground when we're about four or five years old and possibly in church um, and it just becomes packed in with a whole lot of other stuff so what i'm suggesting is look at it new and just see where is it that you are not feeling peace inside of your own heart and mind and those will be the spots that are calling forth for your forgiveness and what i mean by that is your release of suffering. Wow. So when you, when you realize, oh, I don't have to live with this for the rest of my life, this is not hopeless, and I can heal, then the forgiveness work starts to be a, a beacon and a real doorway into, into this incredibly elegant simplicity where we can see the beauty and dignity of every person. When we see it inside of ourselves, it's much easier to see it around us, even when we're making mistakes and we're just being hard to deal with. It's okay, you know, this is part of our awakening. I'm just hoping that more and more people decide, I'm gonna do this in a nonviolent way. I'm gonna do this in a peaceful way because I choose it. I love that. I, you just shared something that I think everybody could start practicing today, and that is looking deep inside and where is it that I'm not feeling peace? What thought or experience, be it past, present, or a future worry, is keeping me from being at peace? And that is a portal to beginning uh, to begin the, the forgiveness work, the self-forgiveness, the forgiveness of others, and then you know a very, very, very deep spiral uh, of other kinds of work that would lead to what we're talking about, a, a depolarization. So, you know, I think if our, if our listeners can just take a moment to find that, where am I not at peace and what needs to be forgiven is really, really beautiful start. Right. And the other thing too, is that 
when the more forgiveness we do, it, I feel like it's, we, we're taking off layers. We don't need to fix who we are. Who we are is already glorious. However, we have to take off the layers of suffering and pain and resentments and all of that. So right. it's like this massive strip tease that we're doing. We're taking off a layer and then taking another veil off and taking it off again. And when we do that, then our intuition gets really, really refined. So the more you do it, the more you're going to be in the flow and you're going to know what is your purpose and how do you um, blend with the whole in order to do something positive? Because we can't all, you know, one person cannot fix the situation. It's got to be as a team. Yeah. And I, I really think communities, you know, I think that's where revitalizing our communities um, in so many, in, I've got six areas in my model. Uh, I think that's really where we start once we've, once we've been able to connect with the fractals of our own being and the unintegrated parts. Um, just, just before we wrap up, um, and I know we didn't talk about this before, but if, do you have like a forgiveness story uh, that you'd like to share? Either, either one that you personally uh, experienced a transformation, a personal transformation, or one maybe you were working with a client or a group so that we can uh, sense a little bit more about um, again, the, the, the transformative qualities or transformative abilities of, of forgiveness uh, as a way to bridge a divide. Okay, well, uh, in my book, I have a lot of stories. Okay. Um, stories Great. that are from my life and stories that are from my, um, my clients' lives. Of course, I, it, I don't use their real names and everything, but you get a sense of, of how to use this forgiveness work. Um, the main story that I tell in my book in much more detail is how I came to this work and the deepest pain that I had gone through, which was that I, um, when I was growing up, my mother had deepening mental illness. And, uh, you know, as a kid, you can't figure that one out. You just, this is just what's happening. And by the way, I found out later that having a parent that has mental illness is very, very similar for the kids as having a parent who has an addiction. And sometimes right. there's both. So it's very, very destabilizing for kids. And so eventually when I was 23, my, my mother's mental illness got worse and worse and she killed herself. And I was pregnant, I was eight months pregnant at the time. So um, basically, she took herself away from me right when I was about to become a mother myself. Wow. And I was single. And I was just really in need of a lot of support. And boom, she was she chose to leave. And that was very, very, very devastating, difficult for my whole family. So when I found the forgiveness work, I realized, oh, I, I can come out of this hole. Mm -hmm. I can climb out of here and I can have a new way of framing the situation in my heart, in my mind, so that I can keep going. Mm -hmm. And not only keep going, but just have a, a good, fulfilling life. Mm -hmm. And so through the forgiveness that I've done of myself and of her and her choices, Mm -hmm. I now feel like my mother on the other side is a team member and she and I do this work, wow. this forgiveness work together. Really right. So, I didn't know that. I don't recall uh, that detail, but thank you for sharing. That's, uh, it sounds like that was a very, very deep and personal process. And uh, what I experienced when you told me that is, um, you know, the self-empathy, the empathy for your mother. I, I sense ancestral healing in there, absolutely, absolutely. And um, so hopefully that will inspire um, other listeners. And I, I, again, I just want to encourage people to take a look, look at your book, Anahala, Forgive and Be Free. Uh, you do have other stories in there, and uh, including your um, travels to Eastern Europe, where you also did some other pretty deep uh, forgiveness work. So, 
Yeah. Um, that anything part's not in the book because it's more recent. But yeah, yeah, that's that was a whole journey to to send blessings and to send prayers um, right. for for our ancestors. Right, and that was that was um, what was the location? Uh, well, for me, I needed to go to Czech Republic and Poland, uh -huh. um, and I just encourage people. Someday, I will write. I will write something about this. I haven't gotten to it yet, but thank right. you for bringing it up because it's yeah. it's really deep, you know. For for where do we need to go in the in the the family history, right? To exactly. to send prayers and to bring light, right? Yeah. And again, it's there's that there's the ancestral healing and a collective forgiveness that takes place, and it is very deep. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anything else you'd like to share be, before uh, we wrap it up here? I want to just—I just want to thank you so, so much for sharing um, these personal stories and and yes. you know some very valuable information about forgiveness, radical forgiveness, and kindness. Yeah. Well, the last thing that I'll mention is yes. people ask me, "How am I going to do this? How do I do it?" So I made an acronym. Um, I actually co-did it with my dear friend, Peter Van Dyke, which is how I met you, Shara. Was exactly. right. So anyway, um, thanks Pete for this. And we did this together and we just dreamed up how, H-O-W. So if you have honesty and you have openness and you have willingness, you can heal. I love that. I'd like to, we'll put that in the comments uh, once we post the, uh, the uh, once the recording's up. And uh, I'd like to just, let's just dedicate this, uh, this episode to Peter. That was really wonderful that we brought him in. My pleasure. Uh, who was also a wonderful peace educator. Yes, uh, a, a, a master yeah. peace educator who affected a lot of people in a profound way. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to mention uh, again, Anna Halab, Forgive and Be Free is one of her books, anahalab.com. And I want to invite everyone to join me here again uh, next week, same time. And my guest will be, uh, again, an, another Bay Area uh, change maker, uh, Anna Halab. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> excuse me, everyday change maker, uh, Samantha Sweetwater. And she is, um, I'm going to call her a social architect and an and evolutionary. Um, and she's got practices um, uh, regenerative practices that we're going to dive deep into uh, next week. So please join us then. And Anna, again, thank you so much for, for being my guest today. And let's just continue with the work, kindness and forgiveness to bridge the divide. Thank you, Shara. Thank, thank you, you for very much. this platform that you're creating. It's, it's yeah. very important. Thank you so much. Right.